Saúl, não sei se consegue nos ouvir. Ernesto, Saúl, estamos só à espera do teu ok para começar. Embora não vejo... Olá, Benildo, tudo bem? Alô? Consegue nos ouvir? Nós, como hosts, nós estamos a ter acesso ao... Eu estou ouvindo. O meu microfone está ligado. Consegue nos ouvir? Alô? Alô? Ah, ok. Um, ok, penso que há alguns problemas técnicos, vamos resolver uh, à medida que vamos, uh, vamos caminhando, mas uh, importa já começarmos com o nosso, com o nosso trabalho. Estou uh, a ver que há pessoas que já estão à espera bastante tempo, não... Não temos o direito de, de cativar essas pessoas por mais tempo. Ah, minhas senhoras, meus senhores, ah, sejam bem-vindos a mais ah, esta sessão de webinars promovidos pelo MISA, ah, que visam, na verdade, de, ah, abordar algumas questões críticas ah, do, do setor da comunicação social. Uh, este é o terceiro webinar uh, e, temos um, e temos previstos uma série de quatro, de quatro portanto este é o penúltimo. Uh, tivemos o primeiro que foi sobre, sobre a regulação do setor da comunicação social uh, em geral. Uh, depois tivemos um segundo que foi que foi sobre a carteira profissional, um tema bastante, bastante controverso e, e, e era importante ouvirmos quais são as perspectivas uh, dos vários atores uh, no setor da comunicação social. E, e agora vamos ter este hoje, que é sobre a, a radiodifusão. Uh, como sabemos... Uh, há um processo que está em curso, que começou já no ano passado, em finais do ano passado, quando o Conselho de Ministros aprovou duas, duas propostas de lei, uh, uma que é a proposta de lei da comunicação social e a outra a, a proposta de lei da radiodifusão. Uh, de facto, a proposta de lei de radio, da radiodifusão é, é a primeira vez que a ser aprovada, uh, teríamos uma lei específica sobre a radiodifusão em, em Moçambique. 
enquanto que a lei da comunicação social ou a proposta da lei da comunicação social uh, seria para uh, substituir a, a, a lei de imprensa que já uh, está vigente no nosso quadro jurídico uh, há, há 30 anos. Uh, mas a lei de comunicação social é a lei quadro a partir de onde depois podem ser extraídas outras leis específicas que é o caso, por exemplo, da, re... da lei da, da radiodifusão, dela também podem ser extraídas leis específicas para, para questões que têm a ver com a internet eh, e, e, e a, a, a radiodifusão comunitária, o setor da comunicação social comunitária e por aí em diante. Um, basicamente, não estamos aqui para discutir especificamente as propostas de lei em tanto que tal, uh, mas vamos fazer uma abordagem geral sobre as melhores práticas em termos do, daquilo que é o setor da radiodifusão. O que é, que, o que é a radiodifusão no século XXI uh, e na idade da, 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 da digitalização? Uh, portanto, são estas questões que penso que... É, abordar neste seminário e, e para isso temos um, um naipe de, de, de pessoas bem, é, conhecedoras da matéria e que poderão é, dar o seu contributo neste debate e iluminando-nos sobre é, o que, é que nós devemos é, esperar, é, quais são é, as boas práticas Uh, que são uh, aplicadas uh, no mundo e como é que elas não necessariamente podem ser copiadas, mas podem ser uh, criativamente acomodadas no nosso processo atualmente em curso. Portanto, estas são algumas palavras que eu gostaria de tecer com um jeito de boas-vindas e, e, e passo desde já a palavra à, à, à moderadora do programa. E muito obrigado.
topic suggested by these people is the new bill on radio a proposta de lei de radiodifusão de Moçambique responde aos avanços tecnológicos decorrentes tanto da migração digital como das plataformas online da distribuição de conteúdos. É muito simples responder a esta questão numa palavra. It's not easy to answer this. My opinion is that this bill does not uh, Uh, does not uh, respond to technological advancements. And I believe it was a, a missed opportunity. We needed a modern law, considering that uh, we've been for the last 30 years, both in radio broadcasting and in ICTs, this law is not aligned with the technological advancements. We only need to look at what is currently happening uh, this week or last week in the context of, uh, of the uh, trials. Uh, there is no regulation what this process will mean for the country. This is so as much strange as, uh, as the government itself has approved in 2014 a national strategy to uh, national, national migration to from analogical to digital at this point in time. At that time, we used to say in the quote, digital migration, digital migration, I cannot hear him clearly. Is, is a legal framework. It encompasses the right to information, competitiveness, political, uh, including the regulation of radio broadcasting. Uh, so on. It also said the same document that in this regard, identified as the main implications for the future they need to draft a new legal uh, and regulatory package on the on these matters and uh, where the following components will be structured in these components we, we note the law on radio broadcasting the same document used to say that the radio broadcasting law should determine the uh, role of the country regulator, the sources of the funding, the structure of uh, frequencies, and the prerequisites for the introduction of new channels. There are different regulations that are also quoted. I'd like to say that if, despite this commitment, which was taken by the government in 2014 with regards to a future uh, law on radio broadcasting, this has not uh, been implemented we do not, it's not reflecting the proposal that we have before us. The proposal of the bill has uh, references towards uh, digitalization, but uh, we do not see in this bill any, we do not see any effort in establishing an adequate regime for a digital radio broadcasting, nor is there an allusion to a future regulation in other words, this matter is uh, this uh, this issue is so important when we are in the 21st century. The law itself, the bill that is before us, is is still based in the traditional model of the analogical uh, era, a law at that time being applied in the 21st century. That's why its focus is more on the traditional TV. And uh, there are very few aspects that are related to what we uh, see as important nowadays. Still more serious is that there are 
uh, references in the bill of some terminologies, some categories that do, are not uh, equivalent to, do not correspond to what should be mentioned in terms of digitalization. Uh, for example, there is a confusion between uh, content distributor and content provider. There is a, a practice uh, whereby there is a licensing of a public uh, uh, broadcaster, which also includes content in terms of good practices, a, a multiplex digital uh, operator should not be licensed to providing content or to, and if this happens, there should be a series of restrictions in the license so that uh, this particular, to avoid pro issues of com com competitiveness with other content producers, these should not be allowed in some uh, regions, this duplicity in, uh, in the so provider of content and uh, this content distributor, these are two different issues that should be distinguished uh, during the analogical, uh, the, during the analogical, so during the analogical era, there was only one uh, boss, the public operator. Uh, should be different from the TV. Is there should be no confusion between these two activities, that is content production and content distribution. This law is also saying is very much based uh, on the analogical era that we are trying to go away from. There was a time when we used to work with one or two channels, TV channels. We have a lot of TV channels in our TV system. That means then that um, it's not possible to regulate, take into account the issue of controlling the channels, controlling the content. It's not possible to impose the restrictions uh, which uh, this law anticipates. These are restrictions which were applicable when when we had uh, when the TV and radio were the only the means of, of media that were available. Now, where we have a lot of media forms uh, related to information, a lot of channels, multi channels. The situation is not the same. So the, wish, the law should be, the bill should be a little bit more courageous, uh, taking into account the context that we are now going through. This bill also anticipates uh, it should promote more development con of bills or laws on the media. And at least in terms of digital television, All aspects related to this should be looked into. Uh, the development of new technologies take us to a more complex exercise. I'm talk, I'll talk about convergence. Uh, convergence does not only apply to television. It has to do with telecommunications. It has to do with other technologies. Uh, so we should have a law that is a lot more encompassing than the law on TV, something that would uh, include the telecommunications and uh, ICTs and the, the TV itself. We are talking about the law that we have, which is a TV law. And, uh, and uh, some aspects should be incorporated in future legislative exercises. What we do uh, in front of this situation, I would not say that uh, let's ignore the bill that we have before us, this is not possible. And I would not say that uh, 
that we should uh, start the exercise from zero. I don't believe that nobody is ready to wait 30 more years to have a bill on TV uh, before us. I do believe that the alternatives that we have are two. We have to try on the one hand to make the best use we have to remove the negative aspects, that, including the law. Some of them have, uh, have been referred to in previous discussions. And also in the discussions that will took place in parliament. So uh, a, lot, a lot of aspects have been uh, expressed. We have to remove from this bill the aspects that are clearly negative and which constitute a risk to the freedom of speech and which uh, would violate our international commitments. Secondly, maybe we should, uh, uh, we should complete what's missing in terms of the new era that we are living of digital migration. We have to rephrase some confusing issues in the bill, we should at least include a chapter which includes this new reality, this new bill that we have essentially with regards to development of uh, digital television. This is an exercise that's not going to be easy, but I do believe that uh, we should give it a try because if the bill is approved as it is, it will be uh, a, a, it will be uh, going backwards, will be approving a law, a bill that is not updated. And in two years or three, we would have to have recourse to other instruments in order to solve uh, problems towards the, uh, in terms of digital migration. Dr. Benilde, I would like to stop here. I believe there is a lot uh, to say we can talk later on in terms of questions and answers and thank you so much thank you so much for your uh, presentation i would now like to invite uh, professor dr celestine joanget jo he is uh, uh, a lecturer in uh, journalism and communication and uh, let us see what he has prepared for us welcome and uh, good afternoon Good afternoon, everyone, everyone who are in this panel. In terms uh, to ensure they or disconnect the, the picture in order to be able to make a presentation without any cuts during my communication. Having said that, uh, I'll talk a little about a bit about what Dr. Lindo said in a more specific manner in the in relation to the regulation of all digital communication. I talk about the digital ecosystem of radio broadcasting, which is of quality, which includes radio, TV, and uh, platforms in digital platforms. I'm talking about the whole communication, which affects Oh, or is from the internet. It is summarized in the context of the ecosystem. This uh, this comes because of the technologies. The technologies have changed the whole communication market of radio broadcasting. We are talking about the market. We are talking about the profile of the public, which is different now. The public that we have is uh, a public that is more demanding in terms of quality of the pictures and of the texts and the even mobility and uh, when you're on television in the traditional tv and when you're in social media this new model is uh, putting on a sort of pressure to the traditional systems of regulation the uh, regulation authorities uh, so that they should change the system in order to include the new forms of uh, broadcasting. Uh, of, uh, if, we, if we look 
in the last few years, the presence of web radio has grown. We are talking about radios that have a nature which are born within, they do not have a physical presence. It's a, a radio that exists into broadcasts contents. There is also a new way of broadcasting, which is a radio streaming, streaming radio. Uh, we should not create a confusion between web radio and web uh, streaming. And uh, uh, there should not be a confusion. Radio Mozambique uh, broadcasts via the internet. It is a physical uh, and also internet broadcasting hybrid. In this great ecosystem, the digital TV, which we are now watching, has come to change the reception of content on television contents. And on the other hand, we have the web journalism. We are talking about uh, we are talking about uh, newspapers that are all migrating digitally. People get through their tablets, their mobile phones, and uh, their laptops, and uh, even PCs. A lot of information going on. There are also TVs, which has become viral. Uh, TVs which broadcast via digital uh, broadcasting. Uh, uh, they, so they are, the number is increasing. There are more than a hundred. There are some that are all over the place. They broadcast, they have content. They quality content or without quality, but they're broadcasting all the same. These uh, all uh, eco these media of the, of the ecosystem uh, demand a new regu regulation in the, due to this scenario. The regulators are uh, being challenged because the law or the bill that we are discussing, which is the law 18 stroke 21, which is the media law, is uh, out of context. It is not applicable. It cannot. You cannot satisfy the new ecosystem that we are talking about now. It is discriminatory if it prevails because it's going to regulate only the analogical system and the newspapers, uh, analogical TV, analogical, and it does not contemplate the new reality of the systems that we are now witnessing. On the other hand, uh, it becomes static if it is kept the way it is, because it will not include everyone in, its, uh, in the regulation. We are now witnessing a great revolution uh, which uh, need uh, new regulating authorities, which include all these all these media forms, digital media forms that we are now witnessing. Therefore, if we look at the bill that was submitted to parliament, uh, there are many uh, missing links. Uh, Dr. Linda Lopes has already referred to them. And these, uh, 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 I will not talk about the missing links, uh, but I'll talk specifically about uh, an opening point uh, uh, where there is the possibility of including this digital ecosystem, which I've mentioned earlier on. This, uh, uh, this is within article number 10, which uh, gives room to the regulation of all systems, the regulation of web radios, which does not, is not there. Uh, so this article does not talk about web radios digital TV, satellite TV, cable TV, uh, streaming TV and blog, blogs and other means. There is a great possibility for us to establish what uh, specific uh, regulations, specific bills, they have a window already within the bill of radio broadcasting submitted to parliament in this window uh, one will have to see who is going to do the specific regulation 
We talk about the irregular, independent regulating authority. We it's also speak about a regulating uh, regulator link it to the state. Uh, a regulation based on the state where the government uh, does the control. Many of the regulations uh, uh, in place all over the world, uh, opening the possibility of the an independent regulating body and not dependent on the state. This regulating authority is the one which is going to which is going to derive specific regulations in order to uh, fill up the missing link that we are talking about. We need to have a specific regulation for each one of them. And of course, by complying with certain principles, even though there is no consensus worldwide on how to regulate uh, these uh, digital ecosystem, but they are guiding principles. One of them is the flexibility of the law itself. It must be it must be uh, it must be rephrased in order to accommodate in your situations that uh, it should not be any static law a static law it has to give room for it to be rephrased let us say every two years or every three years uh, this is a scenario uh, uh, taking into account convergence and technology developments and on the other hand the government must have this neutrality Neutrality means that uh, the government should not impose a technology that should uh, be used by media, uh, radio media, TV media, even in the United Nations. They have established in 2013 the right to the internet, the right to freedom via internet, uh, the pre media freedom via internet. They evoke always this. So the technological neutrality, no government in the world should impose the technology to users and uh, the technology should be open as it is open we should not be able to uh, put in place uh, an, an imposition principle this is issue of neutrality so when uh, a regulation is compelled in any one of the areas they have to take into account the issues of com competitiveness the competitiveness has to be regulated how the market should be regulated the competitiveness the, in terms of uh, pri pr uh, pri privacy and safety of the users we have in the next uh, few months uh, a discussion that has been postponed interactive tv where the the private data are going to circulate uh, within the tv how do we ensure this we have uh, the on the other hand the production by consumers specific how do we protect the consumers because we will have users who at the same time who users and producers of information they are going to be producers and they're going to be producers and users of information this means some data will be circulating uh, in the next uh, few months we have the issue of tariffs in the specific regulations of radio, digital radio, digital TV, web radio, and so on. The authority, regulating authority, must establish a maximum of the tariff that should be established. This is not what is happening right now, where uh, TNT establishes the price to, tra to tr transport the signal. This is, should be uh, uh, the, the task of the regulator. The regulator uh, should be neutral, uh, does not intervene in the market because there is no specific law. We're also talking about the quality of the, of the pictures. Uh, we're talking about digital TV. Uh, pictures have a cost, they must be imposed. Uh, the standard of the pictures do not make it because of the they, they have to be high definition pictures uh, and uh, in the next uh, standards of pictures there are standards that go up to the highest quality and our tv is working with a standard 
is part of this digital standard, but it's a minimum at the bottom of the scale. It, need, it will have to evolve as time. Uh, so it's a combination of the equipment and what the producers will have to do in terms of modernization and also the broadcasting uh, HD uh, and uh, so that uh, people can have a quality pictures. There are the elements uh, which need to be incorporated as uh, as principles in terms of the regulation, multi-programming. The multi-programming is a concept that the digital TV will have to have, whereby the programming is not uh, imposed by the producer of content, but by the by the needs of the of the public. The public will have to say what it wants, and the TV will have to adapt itself to the needs of the users or viewers by making uh, available a program that's not static, whereby the viewer uh, will watch the program as determined uh, within the operator, but it should have uh, the possibility of watching it when he or she wants, and also with the contents that they want. They can download them, they can pay for these contents. This is what multi-programming is all about. There is also the issue of the distribution, which Dr. Lindo uh, has alluded to, uh, between a distributing company and a, a content company. We have a market. Uh, whereby the distributor is also the producer and the conveyor. Uh, this creates distortion on the market. All these needs to be regulated. Basically, these are the aspects that, uh, that we have to take into account in the, next, in the next few months when we establish an independent regulator. We cannot have an, a regulator in the old fashion where, where the government controls the media. We should have a regulating authority and uh, independent. And then uh, we have to then add all principles in specific areas. There's a lot to be done in the next uh, few months so that uh, our regulation is uh, a regulation that's more flexible and uh, adapts itself to the new eco digital ecosystems. This is what I would like to share with you in terms of the issue related to the regulation of digital ecosystem. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Dr. Selishtina Jonget, for your presentation. The challenges are, are clearer with your explanation. We're going to continue uh, with the presentations. I would like to invite our colleague uh, Holden Gedish for him to do the presentation for the next uh, few minutes. Can you hear us, Holden? Good afternoon, Holden. Holden Gedish from TV. Do you hear us? Uh, Good afternoon, Holden Gedish. Welcome. I think he has his microphone on mute. He should unmute his microphone, Holden. Good afternoon, Holden. Can you hear us? Your microphone is on mute. Can you please unmute it? Holden. Good afternoon, Holden Gedish. Welcome to our series of discussions. Is the program director of uh, TVM Mozambique Television is connected with us? 
in order to give a, make a presentation on his uh, on challenges that uh, linked it to the new uh, radio broadcasting. Good afternoon once again, all the Gedish. I do think that we cannot establish contact with Holden, even though he's connected. Yes. Good, af yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, te technology is always a challenge, it says. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to greet everyone, uh, starting with the moderator, Benilde. I'd like to greet also the president of MISA, uh, Fernando Gonçalves, and uh, other speakers, uh, Dr. Linda Lopes and Dr. Celestin Jongette, on behalf of Mozambique Television. It's a pleasure and a privilege to, to take part in this discussion on the new law of uh, radio broadcasting in terms of digitalization. First of all, um, I, we do it. I do consider this moment is an opportunity for the country to make use of so that we can do a reconfiguration of the whole uh, framework on which uh, the media operates. We had an opportunity also to be heard when we are preparing this bill. Uh, some of our suggestions were given. Uh, some of the our proposals coincided with what uh, uh, the proposals that were advanced by some uh, speakers who, who preceded me. With regards to regulation, uh, re regulation, uh, those who produce and uh, and uh, there's also regulation in terms of content and uh, it, that was one of the chapters where we tried to contribute more because uh, it's necessary that something has to be done because for a long time the tv sector and the radio sector has been growing exponentially uh, without uh, there being a legal framework of its of their functioning and inadequate leg uh, legislation to regulate its functioning. We do understand that the new bill will help us stimulate uh, stimulate the content, content that uh, is relevant to the in social, economic, and the political uh, relevance, and also culturally. It's not important only uh, one does not just open a, a TV and uh, and uh, make it work anyhow but the tv uh, stations must uh, make an effort to broadcast contain the wishes and aspirations of the population and also the local content uh, what concerns us and this is what we suggested there should be uh, uh, there should be uh, uh, slices and quota quotes for local production. That means uh, uh, the local production should have a certain content. We should start uh, our understanding is that uh, the TV stations uh, uh, use a lot of their airtime uh, should uh, local content, maybe 80%. We should have a basis, but should not because right now they all the market is just far too open where everything that is done everything is done everything is allowed and uh, we jeopardize the uh, efforts of other stakeholders who uh, like the public service for example uh, which must guide themselves in terms of the, the quotes or the percentage that is reserved to uh, local content and uh, what percentage to foreign foreign content. We do believe that uh, if we do uh, travel in this direction, we are going to have uh, things uh, flowing and uh, 
and uh, to the interests of Mozambique. The other concern that we had that we put forward had to do with the issue of uh, publicity or uh, 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 and uh, and uh, so uh, so publicity is done also by foreign uh, open signal and or closed signal. This is a bit of a problem because a foreign broadcasting, uh, a foreign TV uh, broadcasting a closed signal, uh, whoever is interested can access it via the internet, but not all channels are available uh, via internet. 24 hours a day, for example. Oftentimes, we do see these uh, contents of, of foreign uh, uh, TV stations by visiting contents that have been produced for some time now. We are not trying to protect only to protect uh, uh, protecting local production, but it, it's a, an issue of uh, protecting uh, the privacy because the national TV do not have the possibility of uh, do not have the possibility of going to broadcast abroad in an open signal. Uh, so, so we would be at a disadvantage in that sense. Uh, to summarize, like I was saying we consider this an opportunity for us to be able to work and also uh, to improve the bill in terms of regulation in terms of content i would like to stop here and then uh, i'll be able to uh, maybe come back at the time of questions and answers maybe thank you so much thank you so much uh, holden Gedish. Uh, kept uh, also, if, even though, uh, thank you so much for keeping the time and for your contribution. I would like to uh, please mute your microphone so that we do not interfere with the work. Thank you so much. I'd like to inform our EA participants that uh, there is interpretation going on into English, from Portuguese into English. And uh, for those who would rather, rather, if you can speak, you can speak in English if you wish to. Uh, back to our discussion. We had, first of all, Dr. Lynn Lopish, who brought some positive aspects of this bill, but who also pointed out some negative aspects which uh, are going to uh, interfere with what uh, broadcasting of information is concerned, according to Dr. Arlindo, in terms of regulation, this law does not go in accordance with our situation. Uh, we need to have the legal framework of this uh, bill or law. We also need to have uh, a, a social cultural uh, framework uh, as demanded by our society. The same speaker emphasizes the fact that uh, is that this law is based on the analogical model he made also the uh, use of some terminology that is used, uh, some of which is uh, linked to the analogical model, but there is also a diff confusion between uh, content providers and content distributors, uh, which in the same speaker uh, outline the importance that this uh, law should be all encompassing. It's not only for TV and radio, but it should uh, also include, uh, uh, we have to, uh, a convergent law and uh, all encompassing in terms of uh, 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 TICs, uh, ICTs, we have to talk about uh, ICTs should be included in this bill. Once again, Dr. Lynn Lopish has said that uh, we should not only point out the negative aspects, but that it has as positive aspects. But we need to look at, uh, uh, we should look at the negative issues so that this law does not take us backwards. 
Then we had the Professor Dr. Celestino Jonget, who spoke uh, basically about uh, the regulation of the digital system. Dr. Jonget spoke about the market, they spoke about the profile of the public, uh, and he also spoke about the exponential growth of, uh, of the media system. He also pointed out the importance uh, of this law having to be renewed from time to time, that this law should not be discriminatory. And uh, he called upon, uh, he, watched, he cautioned some aspects of this law that might be outdated if there is no, if there is no a renewal plan, there is no renewal or updating plan uh, two to three years, for example, review of two to three years. He spoke about the uh, some of the missing uh, uh, links, and uh, he spoke about uh, there is uh, there is a miss a uh, regulating independent uh, uh, independent uh, regulator. Uh, vis-a-vis -a, -vis, uh, a state regulator, which should not be linked to the state, which we have also alluded to in previous sessions. Dr. Celestino Juangete gave us some guiding lines which could uh, support us so that this law, so that this law should make it, uh, should make the digitalization should more flexible and improve. He spoke about the flexibility. He, he spoke about the neutrality of the regulator. He spoke about the protection of the consumer. He spoke about the tariffs. He also spoke about the uh, quality standards and the quality standards uh, is an issue that's very important because the perception that we have is that uh, if, we, if you have a decoder, uh, next week, uh, we are within the uh, digital migration. So there are standards and there are programs that can be can be uh, uh, broadcast in the. He also spoke about uh, multi program. He spoke about distribution. Finally, we had Holden Gedish, who is the director of programs on Mozambique Television (TVM) which has spoke about several aspects, challenges, but you also made it abundantly clear that the involvement, the nine isolation of the legislator, the fact that they approached the TVM and the TVM has made contributions. And he spoke about the contribution about the production of contents, which you have spoken about time and time again. He says that the new law uh, it stimulates the production of content. It also stimulates the regulation of the content. He also spoke about the percentages, uh, percentage uh, having given to local content, whether we are in an open or closed, there should be, uh, there should be an encouragement to local content, even if it's not 80% as suggested, but there should be given room for local production, otherwise we'll be in a crisis. This was a short summary of what our speakers brought us today. And uh, right now, we'd now like to open the space for our audience. Uh, please raise your hand and uh, you may speak. We have uh, some questions that have been prepared, but we would like to give a possibility of those uh, uh, for the audience. Uh, please, colleagues, uh, help us identify some issues that need to be addressed or some questions. I can only have access to my Zoom uh, platform. We do not have any questions yet at Zoom but we have some here which uh, which came along which came during the presentation I'll start with you dr shonget in your explanation in your presentation we spoke a lot about inclusion uh, how far this bill is inclusive 
considering socio-economic challenges of our country. Uh, please uh, talk a bit about inclusion, not in terms of the in technological terms, but also we should talk about the inclusion at other levels, like in rural areas, and even in in gender uh, gender issues. I know it's a very wide question. If you can make a, a, a short summary with regards to inclusion. Dr. Jongete, please. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the whoever asked the question, trying to find out about the digital and technological inclusion in the new system. The digital inclusion has been included uh, uh, at the academic or social levels. How do we include uh, people in the new uh, radio, broad, digital radio broadcasting? The penetration rate of technologies in Mozambique is very low compared to other countries uh, in the region and in the world. First of all, because uh, access access to technologies by Mozambican population, uh, what the National Institute of Statistics presented in its statistics of 2000, 2007, we have a, a very low technological uh, penetration, both in urban areas, including Maputo, Beira, and Nampula, and other uh, cities. And uh, still worse, the penetration rate is very low in rural areas. There, we have concluded that we cannot talk about the digital inclusion at this point in time. If we talk specifically about digital inclusion in terms of television, the signal gets even worse. We are in a process of shutting down of the analogical signal, and we are going into the digital uh, signal. The number of people who are included is very, very low. I was on the ground to make, uh, to do a data collection of people who have a decoder and people who have access to electricity with it in relation to people who know what is digital television. The percentage is very low. There is an exclusion. There is a technological exclusion, which is, uh, uh, lack to access of decoders. We have 400,000 decoders for 6,000 uh, households in Mozambique. This is a phenomenal problem. This is exclusion. The other exclusion factor in digitalization is a factor that's related with, with the, the penetration of the digital signal. Uh, in on the uh, TMT also only has only 70% of the population coverage of the digital signal and the other 30%, the, these are uh, gray zones. The, the gray zones are not covered by the digital signal. This is another factor. This is another factor for the digital exclusion. How do we uh, overcome this? There have to be very clear public policies on how this in digital inclusion can be undertaken, both on television, but also on radio inclusion, even though this discourse is uh, has been postponed to 2030. But we can look at it up to in our radio broadcasting radio. How can we ensure that uh, the digital radio can cover the whole Mozambican population? We can also talk about the digital inclusion in other aspects. When women who receive the telev digital television signal nationwide and the empowerment of women is a, a, a very relevant discourse, it needs to be, we need to include this discourse uh, in, in with the radio TV broadcasting. We're talking about the ex exclusions, both at the technological level we're talking about exclusions also at a social level. This is uh, a discussion that could take us to a great reflection uh, on how the public policies 
should uh, draft or prepare inclusive policies. This is the, answer, the only answer that, that occurs to me with regards to digital inclusion, and thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Jonget, for your explanation. We have also some questions for TV uh, director, uh, Mr. Holden Geddish. My first question for Holden is, if we assume that the traditional uh, uh, broadcasting method is cheaper, then the digital migration. Don't you think that uh, digital migration, uh, don't you think that digital migration is going to uh, promote exclusion uh, to access or uh, access of information, which is a right? Digital migration, did you hear me? Digital migration vis-a-vis -vis exclusion. I heard you, but I guess you, you've asked whether digital migration uh, is not going to uh, represent exclusion, considering the, the uh, but above all, an exclusion with regards to access to information, which is a, a right, a fundamental right, which is in our constitution. I do believe that before anything else, so we have to look at the mig migration process as an inevitable process. It brings with it some challenges for sure, some risks, but uh, I do believe that these are risks which are worth taking. As my predecessor said, they are clearly, uh, they are clearly opportunities uh, for areas where it's not possible to watch digital TV, but it's not due to digital migration. Before, some of these areas were, were not covered by the previous uh, 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 network. I would say that it's a challenge. It's a challenge and a risk that is worth taking because as time goes by, we can control it. At this point in time, as I'm talking, there are two to three days where where they have new. Uh, we have a TNT at the back at the television. The concession concessionary company. There is a, a, a shop to sell uh, the uh, startup costs. Uh, uh, there has been uh, a huge influx of people to buy these uh, startup uh, boxes. Uh, so as they buy more gadgets, technology should come to facilitate life, not to create more difficulties. Uh, but we have to look at the migration process as a process that's irreversible because the benefits are obvious in the multiple. They include greater uh, efficient spectrum efficiency, a, a greater economy in terms of resources, which allow the viewer to have better picture quality and sound quality and uh, extra excellent standards beyond uh, other uh, issues like uh, if we look at technology in the restricted sense, which has to do with the television, but the people we were, where there's people who live in the spectrum where the coverage was not available. Now today, because of digital migration, or they have a smartphone, they might not have the the TM, TNT uh, uh, tower, but because they have, uh, but they have uh, a smartphone, they can watch uh, television online. 
I don't look at uh, technology only negatively. At the beginning, of course, uh, there will be challenges, but I don't think these, uh, at the beginning there are these challenges. But as time goes by, these problems are going to be uh, uh, corrected. In some countries, there were also areas where initially uh, there was no TV signal, but there's always an effort to be done to correct the situation in uh, gray areas. This was uh, corrected. I do believe that in our context, what's going to happen, there will be an extra effort for us to correct these gray areas, which are definitely going to occur in some areas so that we can safeguard this constitutional right of access to information. This will be my answer to your question. Thank you so much, Holden. I'll now go to the question to Dr. Lind Lopes. He spoke uh, about uh, the need to have a null encompassing law, uh, not only for television, but also for ICTs. There's a very interesting aspect because uh, these, uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, inclusiveness, so to speak, also includes uh, digital literacy. This is digital literacy. The many people are buying the decoders. There will be another influx. So it's an influx that's going to bring with it new needs, technological or digital needs. I'd like to know from you, in terms of digital literacy, what are the probable scenarios that we are going to face beyond uh, this uh, uh, influx of people buying, trying to buy decoders. This will be in a chain, I believe. What can we expect? And how can we solve this situation that is certainly going to come our way? Thank you so much. If you do allow me, Benilde, I'd like, first of all, I'll talk a bit, uh, I'll talk a bit about inclusion. I'd like to stress that it's important that the Law should facilitate this process, should regulate this process. So it's not going to happen by itself. That's why one of the uh, missing links, uh, I've made reference to the strategy uh, of uh, digital migration. At some point, I said that uh, the model, the the open signal without the need to using of using a decoder. I do understand that the technology has not reached us yet. We do not have digital TV. Uh, televisions, we need a decoder, but uh, uh, technology allows us with digital television, televisions, not need, there'll be no need to buy decoders. This would uh, facilitate the inclusion. Of course, the digital television is going to take some time. And uh, the, the possibility of people having access uh, to the channels without having to buy a decoder, without uh, avoiding then the influx of people wanting to buy decoders. I'm talking about the future. This possibility must be clear. Uh, if it's not clear today, and then uh, we need to spend some uh, funds. The internet is a bit unstable. But we can hear you. We can hear you perfectly. We can hear you perfectly. I'd like to make this uh, a reference uh, uh, to the issue of the uh, regulator. Things are not going to happen automatically. As for the question that you are raising, ask me. Uh, it's difficult to say what's going to happen, as we've all noticed technological developments are so quick that it's difficult to 
dissipate what's going to happen tomorrow and next year. Uh, one fact is that there will be need of a great effort of, uh, you call it literacy, but we call it education, digital education. We all need to learn daily how to use, make use of these technologies. We have to understand these technologies. We have to understand them. It's difficult. If I was a lecturer, I would make a, a manual to uh, teach my students what to expect. It's unforeseeable the future, uh, future developments in terms of digital development. But there's no doubt that this is an area that needs a lot of attention on the part of academia, academia society, and decision makers, and to see how can we educate, how can we help our population, how can we help our uh, viewers and, uh, and uh, listeners to understand and to know to use these new technologies. We, we are talking about the direct use of the of the social platforms. Uh, many, people, uh, many people are surprised on how uh, social platforms should be used. They are surprised at the things that uh, circulate. So there is need uh, for people to educate people uh, to understand uh, how to distinguish what they read in social media and what they hear on television and on internet TVs. Dr. Joindy said that there are many television uh, broadcasts via the internet when he's able to distinguish the facts, you have to be able to, be able to dis dis separate. This needs a specific education. Uh, I hope uh, that I've answered your question. You've the essential has been answered. Uh, if you allow me, moderator, I would like to comment a little. One of the questions that was raised by one of the uh, the uh, the regulation of content, the comment that I can make. When you were saying that uh, it's necessary that. Uh, that there should be a regulation of content. This is controversial to talk about regulating content in terms of uh, uh, radio and TV broadcasting. We're talking about the flexibility of laws with regards to the possibility of disseminating information within the context of a freedom, uh, media freedom. Regulating content uh, sounds like a censorship to me. On the other hand, talking about regulation of content is, means that there is going to be an authority that's going to verify what each channel, TV channel, radio television is going to disseminate, whether these are uh, contents that are, that are shock, are shock with the moral uh, and the education of children. This should not be done. The regulating uh, standards, what it might happen within this flexibility is the issue of there having self-regulation, each channel and, uh, and uh, among the channels they should self-regulate. They should, uh, they should Im impose themselves content that uh, uh, different uh, pictures uh, should not be presented. Uh, contents that present uh, violent uh, against, well, against children, we should, we, should, we should be within a con collective consensus among the, amongst the, amongst the media, media, media organs, not from a state organ imposing uh, rules to regulate uh, content. And thank you so much, Dr. Jonguet. And uh, there is uh, Jovita Fazenda uh, asking a question. So Jovita Fazenda is asking the opinion of all speakers. She is asking the opinion of all speakers. 
I'll read the question of Jovita. According to what Dr. Lindo mentioned about the digital televisions, considering the signal of T and T uh, automatically allows the uh, signal reception without uh, the, the decoder. What is your opinion considering that the strategy for digital migration established that uh, the national channels uh, national channels will be conveyed without uh, interception. According to what Dr. Lindo said about digital televisions, considering that the TNT signal is uh, interpreted, it uh, hinders the position of the signal without a decoder. What is the opinion of the panel regarding this fact? considering that they established the digital migration strategy that the signals of TNT will be without interpretation. Dr. Lindo, please. I've answered partially to the question. I made uh, allusion to this, uh, this aspect. I'll make repeat that uh, the strategy the, the strategy of digital migration alluded to the need of the public operator uh, broadcasting national channels, uh, but this is not in this in this bill. This is one of the bills, one of the problems. This is not. A, it's not. A, it's not in the legislation. Yeah, uh, that's why. That's why I understand what I also understand that at this point in time, in the absence of a, of a digital TV, a TV, uh, digital TV, there's no other way of having access to digital access except through decoders. But this is a transitional phase. Sooner or later, the digital signal will have to be open to everybody. Uh, doctor, thank you so much, Dr. Lindo, for your answer. This is Jovita Fazenda. Thank you so much for asking this. It's not a question from Jovita, it's a general question of all of the public generally and of all those who want to adhere to the uh, services of the signal to satellite television. There is no interpretation. Interpretation means closing the channel and not having access to penetration. The TNT content transmission by TNT uh, leaves open uh, a streetway uh, 22 channels that are streetway. You can have a decoder and their contents that uh, TNT uh, does not allow to be uh, accessed, which are commercial accesses. We are talking international channels, but they're national channels, which are left open, even if they don't, you don't pay uh, the monthly uh, for TNT, for you to have access to all contents. TNT will leave 17 or 22 channels in a very free manner, which do not depend on any payment. If there is this legal uh, loophole, uh, there is a possibility of TNT in future, starting to reduce the number of channels the, up to the minimum so that the people can pay for the services. This is a risk because there is no law. There is also there is also a legal vacuum related to private operators, providers of digital television, digital radio. There are about two to three companies that uh, do the distribution of a digital signal. This companies 
should also be allowed, should be compelled to also have 20 to 22 free channels, open channels. These national free should be available to everybody. We are working in a market, in a distorted market, where there is no law that can regulate all this. If there is a regulation on this, it would have been very clear on the part of the public. I don't pay, but I just want it. Whoever wants to have a little more, then they pay for the other commercial channels that are available. But for public service of television, for TMT in principle, all channels should be open. Everybody should have access to information. This is contained in the, uh, in the media law the risk from, for us to be able to have the confinement of a number of channels one and two is bigger without a regulation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Jongete. If you allow me, I'd like to say that it, it, my understanding interpretation is not only having open signal, uh, and uh, close the channel. It means, interpretation means, to my understanding, if uh, the signal is in a public uh, broadcaster, should allow you to have access to, if you don't buy the decoder of TNT, you're not going to have access to open channels of TNT because the signal is, is encrypted. You can only have access through the TNT uh, decoder, full stop. Why must it be encrypted? If the law says it should be an open signal, like you said, there is going to be uh, a transitional phase where the technology uh, So we have to anticipate for the future. I should be able to buy any decoder as long as it's within the norm of TNT. I should have, have access to TNT channels without buying a TNT decoder. Very clear this issue. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Jean Gret and uh, Dr. Lindo Olden Gedish. Or do you like to make a comment on this issue? I do believe that uh, the essential has been said. What is happening now, if you do have a decoder by, by if you, you have access to TNT channels, even if you don't have a decoder, if your television is as a decoder, if you have this possibility, then you can have access to TNT uh, channels, TNT channels in an open manner, national channels, because the TNT has also foreign channels. And there you, you definitely need to have the decoder. But on this, uh, I believe the TNT can explain better. I would like to comment on the. I believe Dr. Jongete associated the regulation as a censorship. And because of that, he suggests that self regulation is very important and uh, it should be functioning even even in the absence of an instrument uh even in, in the absence of a supervision institution auto self-regulation space is is exists but what happens is that uh, if there's a pro proliferation of contents which are harmful to the development of uh, youth adolescents uh, the programs that are uh, harmful to women and uh, content that are deviant 
promote deviant behavior, promotion of pro prostitution and other situations in some of our uh, programs, radio and TV programs, leaving the market uh, uh, without a, a regulating entity is complicated because the regulation has to do with uh, uh, has to hinder easy uh, audiences or public. There is a national uh, higher media council. We should have uh, uh, attributes to intervene, even in this matter regarding regarding content, and that's why uh, not. Uh, that's why they will have arbitrary situations on television, radio, and also in the written, in the written, uh, the absence of uh, the basic principles of journalism are being ignored, interference into the private life. It could be dangerous to leave everything at the, at the, at the mercy of the market. Uh, but if you believe in the in the self-regulation of institutions and organs. If there is a regulation institution, there'll be, there'll be a certain amount of control. That's why we, that's why we feel a regulator, not for censorship, but I would re repeat, but uh, in order to help the media to avoid situations that are scandalous, I would like to clarify this matter. Thank you so much for this uh, clarification. I'm now going to uh, uh, I'll ask uh, colleagues from Goi Jose would like to present something, Mr. Goi Jose. It will be the last question. Uh, Goi Jose. Good afternoon, Mr. Goi Jose. Please connect your microphone. Um, se preferir, pode escrever, porque nós não, não, o senhor continua com o microfone um, desligado, assim não conseguiremos ouvi-lo. If you prefer, you can write your question because we cannot hear you as you have your microphone disconnected. I think uh, we are not going to be able to establish contact with him, with Mr. Goy Jose. Please uh, let uh, write the question <clears throat> in our chat or in the, our social media, and we're going to direct them to our speakers, and they'll answer you later on as our time. I'd now like to thank Miss Mozambique for playing its role in strengthening uh, what our basis for debate and strengthening issues linked to media. I'd also like to thank the panel members who are here with us. I'd like to thank uh, also the participants who are linked with us through our social media and on Zoom. This was a, a discussion that was very interesting very clear with regards to what our challenges are and uh, what will be the future for digitalization in our country. I'd like to give back the flow to Ms. Mozambique <clears throat> so that Mr. Fernando Gonzalez can have a few final remarks. Thank you so much. And the floor is all yours, Mr. Fernando Gonzalez. Good afternoon, Dr. Benilde. Uh, after everything that was said, would like to thank our panel members, Dr. Lido Membush, Dr. Selishin Jonget, our colleague Holden Gedish, and to you to Benil de Mazzini for, for the excellent moderation and uh, the dis for guiding the discussion, the debate excellently. Unfortunately, uh, time is not in our favor. Uh, and of course, uh, these issues uh, are the 
look like easy questions, but basically they are complex questions. They involve several stakeholders and they each one sees things from their own uh, point of view and uh, to find a balance where all points of view converge is very, very difficult. But, but we're here for us to play a role to give this space for debate, a debate which we believe is constructive and uh, which serves as an element to influence uh, those who in the final analysis have the decision, the decision power. And we do hope that we have been able to to reach our objective. And of course, we are going to continue with our debates. This was the third webinar, and uh, we'll have our last one in a few days. At that time, we are going to inform everybody what will be the details and how we can have access to the platform. Once again, I'd like to thank uh, thank our panel members, to our moderator, and thank you so much. And stay well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.